Mark Andreessen famously said in 2011 that software is eating the world. This was quite controversial at the time, but he gave examples of how Skype was revolutionizing the telecoms industry. Since that time, there have been many examples of how software has revolutionized or changed entire industries. Think of Netflix changing the video rental industry. How many taxis does Uber actually own? And how many hotels does Airbnb own? These are examples of how software companies have revolutionized or to use a Silicon Valley term, have disrupted industries. The same has been happening in networking with the rise of software-defined networking, network function virtualization, network programmability, and network automation. There are presentations on the internet such as CCIE versus Python. There are discussions whether you should pursue your CCIE or whether you should become a software developer. Martin Casado, who is seen as one of the fathers of software-defined networking, tweeted on the 15th of May 2017 that these are the trends that he is following. HTML, moving towards APIs or application programming interfaces. IP version 4, moving to JSON and REST. Dev-driven infrastructure. Artificial intelligence in the enterprise. Infrastructure for the Internet of Things and robotics hardware roots of trust, and simplify security. So if you're thinking about what to study in the next five years, or what's going to be impacting your job and career in the foreseeable future, these are good areas to look at. In this video, I'm going to discuss representational state transfer or REST, or RESTful web services. REST or RESTful web services are one of the ways of providing interoperability between computer systems on the internet. You'll find that REST is used by a lot of big companies, including Google, Facebook, and Twitter. REST-compliant web services allow requesting systems to access and manipulate textual representations of web resources using a uniform and predefined set of stateless operations. Now, why is that important for you as a network person? RESTful APIs provide a richer or a better interface to network devices such as the Cisco ASA. Here's an example on the Cisco website discussing the Cisco ASA REST API Quick Start Guide. And what you'll notice in the documentation is that they use terms that you may be familiar with when talking about HTTP, such as an HTTP GET. When I go to a web page, I'm using a HTTP GET to get information from that web page. PUT allows me to add information to an object. POST allows me to create the object with the supplied information. So as an example, when you fill in a form on a web page, a PUT could be used to supply information to a server on the internet. Here, however, rather than using a web page, we are using HTTP verbs, get, post, put, delete, and so on, for communication between applications. So we have one application, such as a client application, sending information to a server application and manipulating that server application. REST was defined by Roy Fielding in his 2000 PhD dissertation, Architectural Styles and Design of Network-Based Software Architectures. Again, you're going to find that a lot of devices, such as Cisco ASAs, support a REST API. And this is not very clear, but that's a REST client making REST calls to an ASA. And you'll often see data represented in this format, which is a JSON format. Now, coming back to GNS3, GNS3 now supports a REST API. In a separate video, which I've linked below, I discuss the architecture of GNS3 version 2. I discuss how there's a GUI, there's a controller component, 
there's a compute component and there are emulators. So if you wanna learn more about the architecture of GNS3, have a look at that video or read this documentation, which I've also linked below. Curl allows you to leverage a command line based URL application. So as an example, rather than using a web browser to do a get, you can use curl to do a get or to do a post, which are once again methods used in REST APIs. Rather than doing that, I'm gonna demonstrate the interaction between a client and a server using Postman. Postman makes it very easy to interact with a REST API of GNS3 or other devices. So you could use this to interact with an open daylight controller or with a ASA or any other device that has a REST API. They say here that developing APIs is hard. Postman makes it easy. You can download Postman for free for Mac OS, Windows or Linux. But in this example, I'm simply gonna add it to Chrome. I've already got it installed, but if it's not installed on your computer, simply add it to Chrome as you would any other application. So here's Postman ready to be used. Notice we have options like get, post, put, delete and others. In the GNS3 documentation, they tell us that we can use this URL to get information about the REST API of GNS3. So in this example, I'm running a GNS3 topology. I'm using GNS3 version 2.0. My devices are powered off. I have multiple devices, including an Ubuntu Docker container, iOS V layer two switches and IP term Docker containers. So the command again to use is that. So in Postman, I'm gonna paste that URL and click send. And as you can see here, we have connected successfully to the REST API of GNS3. I can see that the version used is version 201 which is correct per the graphical user interface. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.